Welcome to the Mickey J Foundation series. In this series, we go through some of the common tools that I use. Those things that I go through really quickly, but this time a little bit more in depth. Today, we're going to go through hybrid analysis. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for joining me in this new series I've started, the Foundation Series. Today we're going to look at hybrid analysis. Uh, as you can see, I'm actually logged into hybrid analysis. I have an account with them. If you have a business and if it's legitimately looking through samples and things like that, you can apply to join hybrid analysis. They will look at your business email address. They'll look at what you do. You'll need to send them some sample sites to prove that you're a friendly person and uh, not a black hat they'll go through then and vet you and let you join if you don't join you can still use hybrid analysis you just don't get to save results you don't get to download files um, things like packet sniffing you can't get the sample files things like that but you generally get every bit of information you need anyway um, so the address is www.hybrid-analysis.com and you come to this web page here now what we do is we drag the file into here um, I've got one I prepared earlier. It happens to be the same Word file that we went through for the virus total video. We can put a comment in here, uh, an old sample, and I can tell it not to put it through unaffiliated third parties. It will send this off to virus total and things like that. You can allow other people to access my sample or not and consent to the terms and conditions and prove you're not a robot. Away you go. Now the purpose of this tool, the purpose of this tool is to diagnose our sample a little bit more than things like Virus Total. This actually puts it through a sandbox. So the same things as Virus Total, we've got the name, we've got the size, we've got the um, different various uh, CRC checkings and things like that so that we know what the file is all about. Down here we can choose our environment. So we can choose to have um, all kinds of different things running here. Linux, uh, Android, I just go Windows standard 32 bits, fine for me. I don't need 64 bit. Um, I can then choose some extra runtime options. I'm going to go with the default analysis I'm not going to worry about having any kind of extra command lines or anything. I don't know what the file is. Um, I don't need to worry about scripting or anything like that. I don't know what it does, so therefore, why would I worry about typing anything in at this point? I also don't know if it needs to have a custom date or time to trigger the virus, or if it doesn't like the trigger in virtual machines, or if it needs a certain static IP address. So you've seen me pull apart malware, you've seen me pull it down to its basic essential parts, but how do you find it in the first place? How do you stop it getting on your machine and, and progressing? Well, go check out The Virus Doctor. Without him, this episode would not exist. Go check out The Virus Doctor. And if you sign up for any of his courses, special just for you, MickeyJ15. Coupon code. Use it. Okay, so all I'm going to do today is I'm going to generate a public report so that you can look at the same sample I'm going to look at and I'll get the URL that gets generated and I'll pop that into the description of this movie or this video. So here we go. We've already had it go through Virus Total, one of the third party vendors. It's already come back as, ooh, ooh, not very happy. And there are some previous samples that other people have put in there. So I can now let this uh, churn away in the background and wait for my sample to come up. Um, it'll take a little while because I'm third or fourth in the queue. These are quite popular, these sandboxes. Um, we can see here that's already said that it's got a macro on open. The threat score is pretty definitely a virus. Um, antivirus detection, yeah, that's pretty serious. Um, it tells you that I chose Windows to run it on. Um, you can see the previous Falcon Sandbox reports. So, I don't know, let's just pick one. Um, we can either, like I said, wait for mine to go all the way through, or if I'm fairly convinced it's the same thing as before, then I can choose one of these. So, let's choose one. Hey, 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 hey. 
All right. Now, what we have here is a list of everything it does. So uh, starting at the top, um, we've got an overview. We've got sample so we can download the original sample that was submitted. We can also download WIMP cap files. Um, if there's any ex a sort of exports like VBS files and things like that, you can get them further on down the, down the, the list. There's some external reports. You can zip off to virus total and have a look. We've already done that. Reanalyze it. Um, we can report that uh, something about this wasn't quite right. Um, or we can just start scrolling through this particular screen and seeing what's going on. Down the side, we've got some quick little uh, hot links to get to certain parts of this. It's going to accept this cookie so that that goes away. Alrighty, so we've got network behavior, context, one host. Now, if you're logged in like I am, you can actually download the PCAP file and put that into something like uh, Wireshark, and then you can actually see this for yourself. You can watch all of the GET and HTTP GETs and things like that, and all the data going up and to and fro, or we can click here and it will shoot us down and show us the host that it contacts. So this goes to a 69 address. Last time I looked one of those up, it was actually Google. So it was just checking to see basically you could access the internet. And it's going out on port 80. Oh dear, that's fine. They all do that just to see if they've got internet. Apparently it's using... We've got 10 indicators here. That it's using some nasty stuff. So let's have a look. So... This here tells us all the different things it's doing, like hooking, um, process injection, modifying the registry. Uh, it's even doing some email collection. That's interesting. Um, you can download this as a file if you wish to analyze this, maybe you're doing forensics or maybe you want to show somebody else. But you can download this information. We've got a malicious thing happening here. So this, this overall would tell me that, um, yeah, this is dangerous. I wouldn't continue on opening this word file. Um, but we're going to continue through this and have a look at what else it's got to say. So that's what the MITRE attacks given us. Um, indicators. Okay, there's five malicious indicators here. Sample was identified by a large number of antivirus engines. Well, we know that because we scanned it with virus total and yes, it popped up. Sample was identified as malicious by at least one antivirus. That's using a different antiviral product. And yeah, it found it. Network related. Well, we already know this thing goes out to a site in the US. Let's have a look here. So it's going to this 69 site. Uh, it looks to me like that server is running a number of other little websites on it. And it's even got one here that matches that's been found to have viruses on it previously. So we could go and do an NS lookup or do a who is and find out from that IP address who owns it and what's going on. So you can also go off and you can see reports of things doing a similar activity. While that draws up, let's flick back as we scroll down. Unusual characteristics, it contains embedded VBA. Well, yeah, it does, because it's got auto open. And auto open is the way that Word is designed to then run embedded other scripts. So you can actually go through and have a look a bit more about that if you wish. Um, hiding one malicious, okay. Um, suspicious indicators. Potential email address in binary and memory. Look at that. A at R camp of, yeah, that thing. There's quite a few little email addresses hidden in here. All right, I wonder if that other thing's drawn up by now. Let's go across to it. So there you go. So this is actually searching for all the other very similar ones out there um, that behave the same way and basically the results of where they were, whether they're malicious or not, and you can download the samples and things like that as well. Going back to here though. So we've already just gone through and found out that there's email addresses in there that probably get contacted under the network activity. We know that it's using port 80. This is just telling us again, it's using port 80. Um, unusual characteristics, we've got the VBA, so we've got the open, we've got char. All right, so as soon as I see the word char, I know they're using obfuscation to try and hide what they've done in this Word document. Um, and this has actually said, yeah, look, obfuscation's involved. 
um, it's a good way to to cover up your tracks because you're putting numbers in instead of actual characters and it's a bit harder to read as we keep going down it contacts the server well yes it contacts that internet server we're aware of uh, the 6.9 traffic it's got embedded VB macros yes so here's all the different uh, details of that uh, it's quite a wow look at this so you can see all the code that's, that's pretty cool And then we've got the normalized macros. Look at that. So we can see definitely does a HTTP open and send and a receive, um, which we expect anyway, because we saw that it was opening on port 80 and something was happening there. Creates a writable file. What's it going to create? Uh, it's a temp file. That's just Word doing its thing. Mutants. There we go. So it creates all these. As we go down a bit further. Drops files marked as clean. What's it dropping? Okay, so there's another Word file that's popped out. And of course it's firing up WinWord. Run the program files. Uh, opens a service here, it gets more interesting. I oh, know, it's, yeah, it's trying to open a service. Removes resiliency keys, okay. So it's just basically telling Word to not watch what's going on scans for windows names okay okay is a is a drop file this is interesting so what have we got so we got a doc file outputs is a lnk file and then it drops a tmp file and we'd expect it yeah to access the normal dot dot m because it's a word file and every word file starts with a macro which is the normal dot dot the blank file um, I also expect the index.dat under Internet Explorer, which is the indexing file for Internet Cache. So there's nothing there that's crazy. Strings. Okay, so you can go through various strings in the document as well. Opens a mount point. Now, obviously, in this case, it's doing a particular process. But if this was an XE or if this was a JavaScript or some other file, these sections would be very similar but different because they'd be based on different technology. And here we go. So we've got the word files that it accesses security system calls uh, unusual characteristics so as you're scrolling down and down and down and down you're starting to see more and more about what it gets up to so here's the doc file again and this uh, sort of picture what this does is it brings up a visualization of what in the file is data or is visible ascii or might be binary characters it gives you an idea of the content icon obviously it's a word file uh, classification 80 percent sure it's a doc file yep i'm pretty sure it is it's a doc file screenshots so you've got the virtual machine then the virtual machine opens word then word Goes to the next screen. System cannot find the source specified. And arguments of the wrong type. So this virus doesn't appear to have run very well. Possibly because it's an old virus and it's trying to contact domains or things that don't exist anymore. Okay. A bit further down, we've got WinWord. That's not doing anything unusual. I've sometimes seen this WinWord linked to a doc file and then after this, there's a space and another quote, there's an exe file, which is obviously where it's downloaded something. Network analysis, there's no DNS calls being made, which is cool, that's fine. I've also seen word files access thousands of them. Um, and then we've got the countries visited. Then an example of HTTP traffic, which there wasn't any. Um, if there was, there'd be in that WinPCAP file, I could download it. And then you've got the extracted strings. So this is just literally anything that's text that's in the file, it's not binary. Extracted files, there's just the doc file. Um, again, this should be downloading an exe file, but someone's probably put a stop to that by now. Um, it's been in the wild a while, this particular virus, so it hasn't downloaded anything. Then you've got the LNK file, the index.dat file. The various files are edited along the way. And under the runtime, it detected that it did crash, which is fair enough and then anything from the community. Okay, 
So starting from top to the bottom there, we've got a lot of information about what's happening with this particular file. Um, what I might do is I might see if this can actually show me a previous submission. And if we can, pull up a previous one. So I've got my previous submissions here. Um, I'm fairly confident that I had one in here. Here we go. This is one that I did recently on um, a jar file, so it's a Java file. And actually I did a video on this, uh, the jar head video that's up on Mickey J White Hat. And let's have a quick look at this one. So this one here has labeled it as a Trojan. It's 100% a virus. Again, it's telling us up here what the deal is. Um, it's opening up windows, it's rats in it. You can download the sample again. Um, I can download WinP caps again. I can do all that kind of stuff. Um, as I scroll down, you can see the same sort of information uh, that you saw from the word file. This one's particularly cool because it posts to a web server and it actually tells you that. It's changing file permissions with iCackles, a great old uh, NT administration tool there that's still in use. You can see it's playing with WMI. You can see it's evasive. It's trying to get around the detection. Um, it's also trying to get around anything that might be running on a virtual machine. So it checks to see if it's in a sandbox, which it is obviously and it contacts 11 domains and 9 hosts. So straight away you can see that a Word file and an .exe file, or actually in this case a Java file, are behaving completely different. And this hybrid analysis is giving us completely different results, different subjects, different headings, different data. This one executes WMI, plays with system permissions, hooks into the registry. In fact, it's process injecting all the way through here. It's doing something with the system time. Uh, yeah, this is a lot more serious than that word file. It's a gap of probably 2015 to 2019. So the technology back in 2015 was quite uh, non-malicious compared to this. Um, malicious indicators. Uh, as we go through it, we can see that it's looking up SSL certificates, possibly trying to prove or fake that it's a real file or it's going to a real domain. Um, we got the antivirus people saying it's a virus. Yes, we knew that. And then we got more and more and more. Here we go. We've got all these VBS files getting spat out. So this one Java file is jumping, dropping out all these VBS files and a DLL file and an EXE file. So that one file is, is pulling all that down or extracting all that out. Then as we go down further, we can see that we're spawning various executables out of it. Um, we have a look into virtual memory. I do wish this was all auto-expanded, but it's not. So you can see anyway, it's pulling up the uh, Windows scripting host, and then it's calling up Java as well. And it's using Java to write the registry. It's also changing attributes on files. It's running xcopy, and then it's running cscript, which is part of also Windows scripting host, and then changing those permissions with iCackles. Down here, we've got more malicious activity. We've got IP addresses being contacted, uh, multiple artifacts, that's interesting. So we've got all these different URLs, which are obviously all temporary URLs, probably hijacked and stolen. Um, it's using these network ports, so it's on port 7745, not something you would typically see, but that uh, Wireshark could be interesting to look at. And information about the RAT that it's using and some of the files it's using. So. What's it doing here? Um, all right, so it's granting the everyone permission to a particular process under Java. So it's making this run with elevated permissions, I would suggest. Well, everyone, so anyone can run it. Um, here are all the command lines. So it comes down as a jar file, DHL jar, opens up the class file under the temp directory, runs a C script against the VBS. So you can follow the whole path here. And again, this particular sample, I can put the uh, URL into the description. Then you can have a look for yourself. Now, as I scroll down a bit further, it's got some anti-reverse engineering traits. So it's trying to detect that I am actually trying to detect it, and it's going to avoid me. Which is interesting, because earlier on I said also that it had some anti-virtual machine technology built in. 
And of course, these sandboxes are all running on virtual machines. Um, here we go. What have we got? Environment awareness. So this is where it's trying to find out if it's in the VM or not. Some viruses behave differently in VMs. Some behave differently depending on your static IP address or the time of the day or your region zone on the machine. Uh, it's doing more and more WMI queries here. Um, tries to go to sleep for a long time. That's interesting. So this is obviously so that, oh, here we go, it's an executable. So it's either using task scheduler or some other delay technology. Um, for some reason, it doesn't want to run as executable straight away. Maybe so that you don't associate that you opened it with that jar file. Or maybe it's doing some other process and it's waiting for it to finish. Either way, that's malicious. And it's posting up to this particular website and down again. Copies data to or from the runtime folder for Java. We knew about that. Creates new processes. Uh, that's just trying to change all those permissions. Drops this DLL file. I'm going to have to get a hold of that DLL file and have a bit of a dig in it and see what goes on. Executes all these VBS scripts. We kind of knew that. And again, it's trying to run VBS scripts. Uh, going out to all these IP addresses on a HTTPS port. There is one in there that's a port 80. Hmm. That's an outbound. Okay. And... Okay, it's trying to pretend to be Mozilla so that web servers will talk to it. Um, here it's just running, it's just the contents, I guess, of one of the VBS scripts telling you what it's getting up to. Reads the system information, again, probably trying to figure out if it's running in a VM or not. Modifiers, proxy settings. Uh, let's have a look here. Current version settings zone. Ah, so it's adding to the zones to bypass a particular URL. Probably that's where the virus is hiding. Um, checks, looks for resource forks. Uh, drops a text file. That's interesting. Where's that text file going? Drops several of them. Ah, they're the VBS files. So it drops each of those. Uh, installs some hooks. Again, it plays a lot with Java. And some registry edit, edits there as well. Oh, let's not scroll too far. Uh, you got your anti reverse engineering. So you can see this has got a lot more in it than that word file. Um, it take a lot longer to, to pull this one apart. Uh, contains the ability to, to look at the machine time. That could be a trying to work out if it's on a virtual machine. Um, yada, yada, yada. There's also a lot of domains here that are contacted. Uh, what was that one? Safebrowsing.googleapis.com. That could be that's trying to download an exe file uh, and encrypt a machine. Uh, some of those domains could just be to check it's got internet traffic and which server's being hit, so therefore I can work out what country it's in. And again, all these IP addresses. Um, it's doing something with workspaces. Uh, that's all Java stuff. Creates a writable file. Again, Java is outputting all the VBS files. Uh, creates his mutants, which you saw also what word the word file did. Then we've got all these VBS files. Um, loads the .NET runtime environment. This is a very complicated virus. Um, more W scripts, more window hosting. Runs more C scripting, more Windows hosting, script hosting. Uh, spawns these new processes, which are editing registries and changing permissions. Uh, spawns these as well, which look very similar. And then you've actually got the drop files, which we've already been through several times now. There's an XEA DLL and some VBS files. Modifies auto execute. Okay, so that's changing the actual nature of Java and how it runs. Touches files in the Windows directory. So, wow, oh, okay. Okay, so it's touching X copy, it creates a test.txt file. Very interesting. Uh, and the URLs, which we've already seen. Here we go, file details. So in this situation, you've got the jar file, you've got the screenshots again, and you've got some more detail here. So this gives us the order in which everything ran. 
So you can see that we start with the Java, we head out to a command line, we've got C script running this particular VBS file, um, all the way through, scripted all the way down to the bottom here, all sorts of attributes being changed. Then you've got all the DNS, wow! That includes the Tor analysis, so any of the uh, dark web stuff. And you've got all the contacted hosts, which is just, that's it's a lot. It's doing a lot of traffic there. Um, what more than I expected. Then you've got your memory forensics, so you can see what's going on there. And you've got your extracted strings, just like we found in that Word file. Um, and then we've got 20 files here. And because I'm a logged on user, I can actually download this VBS file and individually look through them. So they can download that one, I can download that one. They're all text. They've all been labeled as Hacker Tool or Hacker Tool VBS Agent. And as we keep scrolling, there's more VBS, more VBS, more VBS. You can see there's an executable, um, which we can't download. That would be interesting to take that and find out what exactly that executable is doing. And the DLL. And then we've got even more information. So we've got the text file. We've got more VBS files. We've got the class file. The, uh, the jar file is an archive and it spits out the class files. Um, and we've got some other weird little file here. And then we got this test.txt. I'm not sure what's in that. What's in that? Well, it's not going to show me, but we could, yeah, look at the original machine that was infected and download that. Copy that and run to any runtime notifications. So while it ran, uh, so this is all the stuff that hybrid analysis has done and where it's added it to. So it's obviously contacted uh, virus total and things like that. And then we can add a comment at the very, 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 very bottom. So as you can see, the hybrid analysis, um, it changes every time with every type of file that you run and it gets more or less informative depending on what the actual virus does and what technology is. But I start at the top, I work my way to the bottom. Um, I learn as much as I can about this. So I know it spits out an exe file. I know it's got rat behavior, which is uh, not a good thing. Um, remote access tool. Um, I wouldn't mind finding out a little bit more about the exe file, especially seeing as this was a real virus submitted to me by somebody. Um, I wouldn't mind, I didn't notice before when I did this that the exe file, even though it wasn't there for download, it does actually have a name for the virus. So I will check that out. Hack tool. Sorry, that's the VBS. I need the next one down. This one here. So obviously I'm going to get that and I'm going to Google it uh, and find out a little bit more about it. So let's just see if it's of use. Okay. No, it's coming up. A little bit of discussion about ransomware. Hmm. I don't know. I'd have to look at that a bit later. Um, we do have a threat encyclopedia here from Trend Micro, which might help us. Um, but that's not the whole reason for this. Let's have a look. So we need to show you the product. Let's have a look what it does there. Um, Technical details, file size, spyware. So it's a spyware. It's, it doesn't look like it's actually ransomware. Um, modifies a registry where well, we saw some of that going on. And it has a rat, yes, backdoor routine, and information theft. Okay. So that does look quite interesting and they'll need to do some digging in that so that's your quick very quick overview of hybrid analysis you whack your file up there uh, you let it do its little process you can come along if you wish and it matches one of the others and click on that and see what the actual analysis is and then once you do the analysis um, you've basically got all that data to your disposal to to work out what to do with that file or to how to clean it up or what damage it's done or whether you need to reformat the machine and it's all there for you 
So uh, thank you for your time. And next time that I uh, go to do this, you've got some details.